So the nemesis from Atmo Mixani, um, don't know if I am uh, pronouncing that correctly, but the device is um, all stainless steel. You can get it in a number of different finishes. They have, you know, all brushed, all polished. You can get, this is the Vapor Wall Edition, which is a brushed uh, tube and button. Um, and then the top cap and the lock ring are polished. And then they have a reverse version of that, which I think is the Eric Edition. Uh, and then they also have uh, a number of different uh, torched stainless steel versions as well. Um, that you, So you can get them in different torched colors. Um, very cool. So, um, like I said, the body is all stainless steel, and then the contacts are uh, silver-plated brass. Um, the dimensions of the device, it is a 22 millimeter device. Um, it has, uh, it's 62 millimeter in 18350 mode, 76 millimeter in 18500, and 93 millimeter in 18650. You can even set it up uh, in 18650 with a kick if you want to. So uh, it's got enough tube segments to go all the way up to 18650 with a kick. Um, the. What does it come with? Um, obviously, the mod. This is an 18650 mode. You also get uh, an extra spring for the switch. And um, you get the uh, extra segment that will allow you to, to use a, a kick. And also, this will be used in 18500 uh, mode. You take out one of the long segments and replace it with this guy. Uh, in 18500 mode, and then you would go down to one segment, one of the long segments in 18350 mode. So, um, the device feels extremely well made. Um, the machining quality on it is really, really high. Um, the finish is is impeccable. Uh, it's it's actually flawless. I couldn't find any. Um, issues with the finish at all. Uh, it looks absolutely beautiful. And I really like the engraving on it too. Um, if you can see this, this is the Nemesis engraving. Pretty cool. Little uh, dual scythe kind of angel of death kind of thing going on there. So pretty cool. Um, the device is light actually like surprisingly so uh, I thought that it would be heavier but without the battery in it it actually feels quite light uh, not flimsy um, but it, it just uh, it just feels a little bit lighter than I was expecting it to feel um, the firing button on it so this is one of the things that I really like about this device so the throw on it is pretty sh is, is it's pretty short it's not too long um, but it's really soft, which I like. You know, it's got a real soft throw. It's a real soft spring in there. Fires every time. Um, and the... I love the way that this is designed. So the way that the bottom switch is designed is... It actually... So you can see this here. The threading is on the uh, exterior, and it threads to the inside of the uh, the tube right here. And the way that it threads in uh, is actually how you adjust the for different for variations in the length of the battery. So instead of having to deal with a positive, you know, uh, um, you know, a telescoping screw on the positive end. Uh, or switching out pins or having, you know, all the different types of adjustments that you have with, um, you know, the different types of uh, tube mods that we have out there. With this one, you literally, you just screw the switch in until it makes contact with the battery. And that's it. Uh, that's all you got to do. Yeah. And, you know, if you, if you have a bigger battery, it's just unscrewed a little bit further. And that's as far as it goes in. So, you know, and then we'll screw it in so it's snug awesome awesome design it's very compact as well uh, this the mod is very short for a device that also has airflow control 
Now, I personally don't care about the airflow control because I'm not using anything that would require it. However, it is a nice feature. There are still a lot of people that are using, um, you know, uh, rebuildables that have airflow through the bottom. Um, it also would be a good device to use a, um, a diver with, for example in you know a nice tank you know if you had like a trap tank and a diver this would be great for that it's got a similar airflow control as the the one on the 69 mod so if you see if you look up close here you see those two little dots right below those two holes that means that it's lined up uh, for open air and then you just turn uh, you just turn the top here and you can adjust it to close off the airflow all right and then turn it back obviously to um, to uh, open it back up. So, great for uh, use with like an Odysseus or a Penelope or something like that that, that requires the airflow through the bottom. Uh, or if you wanted to use something like a diver with a nice tank, like a privy tank or a trap tank or, or, or any other you know high-end tank. So that's really nice. Um, the engravings like I showed you look really nice. It also has an engraving on the opposite side that says, has the number and it says Nemesis. Um, the in, internally, I'll show you the inside of the switch again. Um, the it's a you know it's got a you know it's got a Delrin insulation with a nice soft spring, and that is silver plated brass that contact, and then the inside of the spring is uh, brass as well, and then the positive contact. I'll show you that here. Nope, and here's Fred's cameo. Alright, hold on. Fred has to say hi. Say hi, buddy. No? Okay. There you go. Uh, so, the positive pin, this is also uh, silver plated brass. And this is adjustable as well. Uh, and this you can unscrew and screw in to adjust for the uh, the pin on the atomizer. Come on, dude, get out of here. Uh, you can adjust for the pin on the atomizer so that you can get your Addy to sit flush on the device. Uh, it is not a telescoping. It's just you know uh, a single screw that you adjust and you know get your device to sit flush on the top there. So let me put this all back together. All right. It's got real. It's got really nice big contact points too, um, which is nice. I like. You know, I hate using really teeny tiny parts because I always find that I drop them and. Um, you know, they end up falling into like some crack in the hardwood floors at my place and dig them out. So with these, you have those nice big uh, silver plated screws. They're really easy to clean. Uh, you do have to maintain them because they're silver and they will tarnish, but you know, it's recommended you clean them, um, you know, once a week, once every couple weeks uh, to maintain the, the high quality performance of the device. So um, what else? The top cap, I'll show you real quick. Um, it's a nice, clean, flush design. And you can see on the inside there is the... Um, if you decide to focus, come on. Work with me. Ah, you suck. So, it is a nice, clean design in there. There we go. Um, you don't have airflow slots because uh, the airflow is through those two little holes I showed you on the side. And as you can see, you've got that adjustable center pin in there as well. Um, really nice looking. Um, you know, I know that's personal preference, but uh, I think that it's a really nice looking device personally. Um, and the quality of the performance of the device is really, really good. Uh, it hits really, really hard. Um, you know, I know 
a lot of people are, get sick of hearing, uh, you know, reviewers say, you know, it hits like a train, whatever. But um, it's comparable to any of the other high-end devices that hit extremely hard and, and don't have a lot of, perf you know, loss of, of voltage. Um, you know, I would compare the performance to that of, um, you know, a Poldiac or a Bear Brass Mod or a Caravella, um, where, you know, you wrap the coil, you set it up, and it hits the way that you would expect it to. Um, you know, you don't have to take a coil off because it's not hitting hard enough like you have, you know, on, on some devices. And uh, it hits really well. Uh, the silver contacts you have to maintain, but, um, you know, if you, as long as you do that, it will continue to hit well, too. Um, I'm going to take another vape off of it. So, I mean, obviously the vapor production and the flavor that's going to have a lot of that's going to have to do with the atomizer that you're using on top of it. So I'm not going to get into that. But as far as the, you know, how hard the device hits with, you know, putting the same battery in, uh, you know, like a Bear Brass Mod or a Caravella or a Poldiac or uh, any other, you know, a Chiyu, any other devices that are, that are extremely high performance uh, mechanical mods, it is comparable. Um, I love the way it looks. I like the way it feels. I like the way the button feels. Uh, it does not fire under its own weight, which is another thing that I like a lot, so I don't have to deal with the, um, you know, turning the lock ring on it. Um, so, the only thing that I don't love about it is something that I've kind of realized is... So, I don't... I didn't... At first, I didn't love the lock ring. So... The reason I didn't love the lock ring is because of this. So, if you watch, I'm gonna I'm gonna lock it. Here we go. Okay, we're still going, still spinning. Here we go. Okay, done. Now it's locked, right? Okay. So I mean, you really gotta keep going and going and going and turning that thing to get it to lock. Okay. So that's what I that's what I thought because I'm used to device, oh, turn, turn, turn. I'm used to devices where you have to keep, you know, you have to turn it until it hits the, the firing button. Um, but that is not the case with this device. Um, so if you did want to turn the thing all the way down to where it touches the button to lock it, then yeah, you got to turn it for a while. It's because it's really fine threading uh, on the inside of that. However, what I realized is because it's not, it's not a super short throw, so I actually have to, you know, I'm pushing it to, um, to here. Focus for me, come on now. I'm trying this again. Okay, so I'm pushing it, you know, pretty far in to get it to fire, which means that you actually don't have to unscrew the lock ring all the way to get it to lock. So unscrewing it just that little bit, now it's actually locked. It's not firing. So um, so it was really, I guess it was user error uh, on my part. Uh, you don't actually have to uh, turn that ring over and over and over again and get it to the point where it meets the um, where it meets the button um, to get it to not fire. Uh, you know, when you press the button in. So, yeah. So that was really my only gripe about the device, and uh, it's really not a legitimate gripe. So, um, yeah. I mean, overall, I love it. It's a really, really nice device. Um, it's priced comparable to other high-end devices on the market. Um, it does have some features that not all devices have. It does have that airflow control, so if that's something that you're looking for, um, that's great. Uh, it's there. It has it. Um, it's got, you know, it's beautifully machined, it's really, really high quality, it looks phenomenal, and yeah, I am a big fan of the Nemesis. Definitely a big thumbs up, highly recommend it. Um, it's, um, you know, I definitely would, would classify this guy as a keeper. So, um, you know, and, and they're producing them... You know, they're still not easy to get yet, but they will, you'll be able to get your hands on one uh, easier than you're going to be able to get your hands on some of the other higher end, 
high performance devices so um, just be patient uh, you know don't overspend on the classifieds for one of these they're becoming available you know they go up like once a week on the on the website so just you know keep trying you'll get one um, and uh, yeah I, I highly recommend it so good job uh, at Momixani the nemesis is uh, is definitely a huge hit so uh, well done